Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to change the front brakes on this 95 Volkswagen Jetta. Alright guys, now the first thing we're going to do once you get your wheel off is we're going to go ahead and loosen up these two. We've got two of these bolts here. There's one down below and one right there. And they're going to be 13 millimeter bolts. And essentially we're going to take those bolts out and remove your caliper and that will expose your brake pads. And then we'll be able to change the brake pads. And then if we're going to be changing your rotor, what you want to do is we got two 17 millimeter bolts. Let's see. They sit right there. And see, I'll get you a flashlight here. So, yeah, right there. That's your 17 millimeter bolt you gotta get out so you can get this caliper bracket off. And then you'll be able to get to your rotor. And then you may have a screw sitting right there. And oh, God help you if you gotta take that thing off because it can, it can be pretty difficult sometimes. But sometimes it'll come off easy. If it's looking rusted and old and nasty like this one, then it's gonna be pretty tough to get off there. So, but um, I won't be able to show you that because I don't have one in there. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you taking off these bolts and we'll show you changing the brakes. Alright guys, now one thing you might run into when you're doing this is you'll be spinning your ratchet like that. And as you can see that, that nut right there is spinning also. So what you need to do is we got a 15 millimeter wrench we're going to put on there. And we'll just set that right there. And then we'll go ahead and spin and You'll use that to break the bolt off the nut there so you can take the bolt out and we can get that caliper off. Alright guys, and once you got those two caliper bolts out, what you're going to do is take a long flathead screwdriver like this, stick it right in there. Let's see if I can get it. Alright, I'm putting it right there between the pad and the caliper. I'm just going to wedge there slowly. And what that's doing is compressing the piston. So when you go to put the new pistons back in, it's still slowly compressing your piston will be compressed all the way back so the new pads will fit. See now, your caliper is nice and loose and it just comes right off and your pads are back. There, so. Okay guys, and here's the old pads. I'm just gonna take them off and set them down. And as you can see, there's plenty of pad and this is just a junk car so we're not putting new pads on it anyways. So I'm just gonna take those off and it's as simple as that really. And when we put the new back pads back on, you can take some disc brake grease and apply it to the edges there so when the new pads are sitting on there and it rocks back and forth it makes things easier and but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and take the two bolts off there in the back the ones I showed you earlier right there the 17 millimeter and then there's another one right there you can see we're gonna take both of those off and then we'll take this caliper bracket off and then we'll be able to get this rotor off okay and one more important thing before we remove this bracket right here uh, there's an important thing to note here, the rotor minimum thickness. You need to get that measurement and then get you a tool that kind of looks like this. It actually needs to have tips on the end so it can bite down in. As you can see it's uh, flat, you need the, the bite down in kind. But you're going to get that minimum thickness measurement for this particular car. And then what you're going to do is you're basically going to measure it, some, measure it like that and then you'll compare that measurement to the minimum thickness measurement and whether it falls below or above the minimum thickness determines whether you're going to keep the rotor or if you're having it resurfaced you need to make sure it doesn't go below the minimum thickness number because then if it does go below then you're going to have unsafe brakes you're going to be driving a car that's unsafe to drive because the brakes are not going to be safe to drive anymore because it's below the minimum thickness and you cannot tell whether it's too thin just by looking at it i promise you you're never going to be able to see it. if it looks too thin then it's probably way below minimum thickness so just remember that when you're doing your own brakes all right guys so here i'm i'm taking out this last bolt here and this bracket should come right off and it did so I'm just going to set that down and if you're replacing your rotor or taking it off and having it resurfaced all you got to do is take it off like that and then if you have the screw that's going to be in there or it'll be right in there it can be really difficult to get that out there's lots of videos 
I may or may not have a video showing you how to do that. If I do, I'll put a link in the video description and an annotation link up right now so you can see that and go see that and see how to take out those difficult bolts. Um, I know Eric the car guy might have a good good one out there. I'll put that link up if that's if I don't have one. And so basically you'll be taking that off and then you'll be able to put your new rotor or new resurfaced rotor back on there and then you'll be good to go. Now I'll put everything back together and show you the important things you need to know when you're putting it back together so you can put it back and be driving safe. Okay guys, and the first thing you want to take note of when you're putting it back together, the thing we just talked about is the screw. If you're going to put the screw back in there, then just make sure this hole is lined up with the screw hole and not over here when the hole's down there. You know, because the hole, it's right there. So just make sure you line that up. Um, I never put mine back in just because I don't really want to, but anyways. So just make sure you do that right, and then the next important thing here will be the calories per slide pins, if they're there. Um, You'll find that out in just a second here. Alright guys, and that's your caliper bracket right there. And what we're looking at right here, let's see. See how I'm pushing that in? And it slides back and forth like that. If it does not do that, if it's stuck in there, you you are going to need to remove these pins and lube them with grease. Um, preferably high temp brake grease and you can just take them out like that and you'll wipe it off clean and put some new brake grease on there because if these are not sliding back there smoothly what can happen is your caliper can get kind of stuck one way and it can wedge the brake pad and it can cause uneven brake pad wear and stuff like that so you need to make sure these guys are sliding in and out smoothly and they're not stuck because you don't want to mess the brakes up. Other than that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I can show you putting everything back here together, but it come, goes back on the same way it came off. So I'll show you guys just, uh, just to make you more confident in the job. All right, guys, so I just got this bracket back on there. You want to make sure it's good and tight. And I realized that for you guys, the screw probably be a good idea because the whole holes line up and the wheel bolts instead of lug nuts. I forget, I don't normally deal with this car, but yeah, you, so you probably will want to put your screw back in there. I didn't think about that, just for the sake of holding it. And so I'm going to go ahead and put these. That's why I got that wheel bolt in there. So you'll go ahead and put your new pads back on there. And if you did the flathead screwdriver thing I was talking about earlier, and you got your new pads now, you got them sitting in there, you should just be able to slide right back on there, and it should be nice and snug. And then you'll go ahead and put the caliper bolts in and tighten it down and that's pretty much it guys it's all there really is to doing it you can go ahead and put your wheel back on get your wheel bolts back in and that's pretty much it well that's it for today's video thanks for watching okay guys and lastly oh i almost forgot to mention i almost always forget to mention depress your brake pedal all the way down once you're finished with your job it kind of pumps the brake back up to where it's supposed to be because if not, the brake pedal will just sink down to the floor when you try to go backwards or forwards. So you're going to hit what's ever in front or behind you. So remember to pump up your brake pedal before you just go ahead and take off right after you're done with your new brake job. Here's what we got after the pistol rounds went through it. I got six out of eight, not too bad. So we got one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. It looks like something might have hit. I don't know if that was a bullet or not.